Okay, welcome back to my uh, lecture for introduction to compiler is on chapter 2. So today we will discuss a uh, subsection 2.3, the third section of uh, this chapter. So which is the implementation techniques of a compiler. So in this uh, subsection, we will look into uh, what is the, uh, the introduction, uh, what is the structure of a compiler as well as uh, some uh, important notations that we need to know before uh, we uh, uh, to understand further on the, uh, the rest of the implementation techniques. So the next section we will look into a bootstrapping. We will also look into a cross compiling and also a compiling intermediate form and the last one will be the compiler compilers okay so these are the subtopic that we will we will discuss uh, in this uh, lecture okay so this is the structure uh, of the uh, compiler so we will have a uh, input the compiler will have an input as well and as well as output. It's the same as our uh, normal programming uh, language. We have uh, input and output as well. Uh, we also have a processing uh, part eh, uh, between input and output. Okay. So the input we normally call it as a source program. Okay. And the output we call it as a target program. Okay, the, op, the, uh, the output uh, from the compiler for the target program is called an object code. Object code, yeah? where in the source program is called a source code. Alright, so uh, on the top here, the a small rectangle here would be the name of the computer system. So we can have like PC, we can have like Sun Microsystem, we can have like a Mac system. Okay. And uh, the, the big rectangle here will indicate a compiler, the compiler. So the compiler will be loaded into a memory or RAM uh, inside the computer. And this uh, compiler should be running on the uh, machine that indicate on this small rectangle. For example, here you use Sun, uh, then the compiler should run on Sun. Okay, so this intermediate uh, compiler we call it as an executable compiler. Okay, so this compiler will transform, will translate uh, from one language to another language. Okay, so here is some uh, noti no notation that uh, we need to know. Okay, so as we all know, the purpose of our translator uh, uh, compiler would be to translate from one language to another language. So here it will translate X into Y. So the purpose would be, the, this is the input. So the output will be also the same. It would uh, actually translate X to Y. Okay, so the input and output is actually the same, eh? x to y. Okay, so the machine here for the compiler, uh, m is the, uh, the machine that you're running, uh, it should be in the machine code, eh? machine code for that particular system. Okay, let's say you have a son, they have their own machine code. Uh, PC, they have their own machine code. Max also, they have their own machine code. Okay. And this is the language they use, okay, as. So this language must be the same as the input of the executable compiler, okay. The object code, the output for the executable compiler must be the same as the language on object code, okay. So this M is the uh, machine uh, that you run the compiler. It can be like Sun, PC, or Max machine. So this is the notation that you need to understand uh, that can be that uh, we will use for discussion on the next section. Yeah. Okay, so I give an example here. Show the output of the following um, compilations using the big C notations. Okay, they're given you input. They already give you an input. They already give you executable uh, compiler so they ask you what is the output so the output is how to get the output okay look at the input here 
it this input actually this compiler actually they want to translate other language into a PC machine code okay so it will be the same it will be the same as it will be the same for the output part so output will translate either to PC machine code as well okay so uh, for the language here, what will be the language here? The language here, will, the object code will be the same as the executable output. Eh? It will be Sun. Sun microsystem. So, it's the same. So, the solution here is uh, translating other language, uh, other compiler into a machine code in Sun microsystem. So, this is the output. Okay, now we want to look into a bootstrapping. So, what is a bootstrapping? Uh, bootstrapping is another way of uh, implementing compiler. So, uh, what did bootstrapping do actually is, uh, it generally involves the use of program as input to itself. Okay, they use their own uh, uh, language, like in this case, they want to have a Java compiler. So, they create that Java compiler and create uh, uh, a bootstrapping. A bootstrapping means that a sub-program, eh? a sub-program, uh, small, uh, uh, several sub-program to create a compiler. For example, in this case, we want a compiler of a Java that will be Java compiler that... Uh, translate to a sun machine code okay in the sun microsystem so we need to actually uh, create two small program uh, which is uh, java java compiler for sun and then also a sub program so what is it sub program okay sub program actually here is oh, is also a java program but in the small scale means that is a small portion they only have certain function so bootstrapping actually is the combinations of a small small program combining together at the end this is the iterative process eh? so they will do it a bit by bit so sub, a sub program by sub program and the end they will get a complete java compiler for that machine so that is bootstrapping. Bootstrapping means that they have a sub program of compiler. So they, they will have many. Yeah? So it depends on how many functions they want to create uh, for the Java language. So they have divided into a small Java uh, sub program uh, and they do it repeatedly until they get a complete set of Java compiler. Okay? That is a bootstrapping. Okay, next one is the cross compiling and other implementations so for cross compiling it is a two steps process eh? it is a two step process so for this uh, java compiling uh, cross compiling they have existing they need to have existing compiler means that you already have a compiler then you can use a cross compiling so what does it mean for example i want to create a java compiler okay uh, that will uh, translate into a machine code in max a max machine i already have we already have a java compiler but in sun system okay in sun system so we already have this compiler in hand Okay, so what we do is, so we write a Java compiler in a Java language. Okay, this Java compiler will translate into a Max machine code in Java language. So we use that as an input for our existing compiler. Okay, for our existing compiler here. So we, we just write this one. Okay, we make it become an input of our existing compiler and we, we produce a uh, uh, intermediate uh, compiler here yeah, okay so the intermediate compiler here which is a java compiler that convert uh, to a max machine code in sun microsystem okay still in sun microsystem so we want it to be in a max uh, system so we do it again the second step using the same uh, java that we create into the uh, intermediate compiler that we have okay and then uh, we produce 
the output object code of a Java compiler uh, in the Max machine. Okay, so it still also need to follow the, the structure that we have uh, between uh, the input and output. Okay, they have the same input output. Okay, and the input for the language must be the same. Okay. So this is cross compiling. So cross compiling using assisting compiler. So there is a two step process here. Okay, next one is a compiling to intermediate form. Okay, so we see here there are two figures here without intermediate, the first one, and next one is a with intermediate form. So what will be the difference? So the, for the first one, uh, you, you need to bear in mind that uh, each of the uh, language, uh, let's say for Java language, uh, they need a different compiler for a different machine. For example, I write a code in Java, uh, then I want to run it on the PC machine, then I need to have a different compiler when I want to run it on a Mac machine. Okay, different compiler. Uh, the same thing with other language. So each of the language will have a different compiler eh, for, for a different machine. So we call this as a machine dependent because the compiler would be depend on which machine you want to run. So if you want to run it on a PC, they have their own compiler, its own compiler. If you want to run it on a Mac, they have their own compiler, even for the same source code. Yeah? So in this case, you will see that uh, if I want to run a Java, the same Java program, I will need to have a two different compiler, which is one for Max, one is for PC. Okay. So in this case, if you see in this figure, if I have three language, then I need to have six compiler. Okay. Compared to the, the one with intermediate form, so they put one in the circle here is the intermediate form, another compiler, another language, which is the intermediate. So this intermediate compiler will act as a, a compiler to convert it into different machine. So this one we call it as machine independent because it does not depend on machine. You can just write a code in Java and run it into, uh, send it into, be an input of the intermediate uh, uh, compiler. So this compiler will compile uh, your code, will translate your code according to the machine on where the program is eh, located. Okay, so example, eh, example for this intermediate uh, compiler will be Java Runtime Environment. I guess uh, all of you is familiar with this uh, JRE. Okay. JRE, uh, when you want to write a source code in Java, you need to download a Java Runtime Environment together so that you can compile your program. Without this JRE, you cannot compile your program. So the, this JRE is the same when you want to uh, run it on PC or run it on Macs or run it on Sun Microsystem. So that this compiler should be able to translate your source code into appropriate machine uh, or targeted machine yeah, or, or targeted system. So that is the, the the significant here is you don't need a um, uh, different compiler for a same language. So here, if I write it in the Java, I only need to have one compiler for a different machine. So I don't need uh, lots of compiler, different uh, compiler for a uh, machine that uh, different machine. Okay. So it will be less compiler to use. Okay. Next one is a compiler compilers. Okay, compiler compilers actually is a tool. It is it's a program. Eh? So it will generate the output is a compiler. Okay, so what does it do is uh, the purpose is to automate the process of generating compiler. So it means that you don't have to hand code. You have the, the programmer don't have to write the compiler itself. So these uh, compiler compilers, this tool actually will help the programmer to generate the compiler automatically. So what will be the input? 
And the input will be a formalized description of the language. What does it mean by formalized? If this is a formal language. If you learn in the discrete structure, then you know what is a formal language. Eh? Uh, like you learn, you learn a grammar, you learn also a finite state machine. They are using formal language specification. So this will be the input for these tools. So the output for this tool is a compiler itself. So they will generate the compiler for a programmer. So you don't have to write the code that will translate your high level language into machine language by uh, by by yourself uh, as a programmer so the, these tools will help you actually so you just need to supply the formal language okay so uh, we will discuss uh, further on this topic when we look into a next chapter next chapter 2 and uh, chapter 5 on a uh, civil cc uh, this is a software uh, to write a compiler eh? so we will look in, into that further so this is just a basic structure if you look into the figure this is a basic structure of compiler compilers so the input will be a language specifications and also the semantic descriptions so it's a formal language okay so uh, this is a tool so this the, the one inside here is actually is a machine that would translate it into a compiler eh? so the output will be the compiler the compiler program so this compiler program uh, that can be used to translate our source code into the object code object code in the machine or assembly language so this is a compiler compilers okay so this is the end of chapter two so uh, i hope that you can get um, some uh, detail some knowledge from this chapter uh, so we will continue on chapter 3 which is on a lexical analysis. Thank you very much.